Hi guys, and welcome back to Screen Trends. Don't forget to hit that red button and subscribe so you don't miss any of our upcoming videos. Today, we're taking a look at seven insane moments on Hardcore Pawn. Hardcore Pawn is an American reality TV series produced by RDF USA, later Zodiac USA, and Richard Dominic Productions for True TV about the day-to-day -day operations of American Jewelry and Loan, a family-owned and operated pawn shop and broker in Detroit, Michigan's Eight Mile Road Corridor. American Jewelry and Loan is owned by Les Gold, a third-generation pawnbroker and businessman, and the grandson of a pawnbroker who once owned Sam's Loans, a now-defunct pawn shop on Michigan Avenue in Detroit. Les first opened American Jewelry at the Green 8 Shopping Center on 8 Mile Road in Oak Park in 1978, moving to its present location in 1993. In 2011, American Jewelry expanded to its second location when it acquired Premier Jewelry and Loan in Pontiac. The new location was featured on the first episode of Hardcore Pond's fifth season, and in two episodes of the sixth season, where Les's son and co-owner, employee Seth, attempts to sell the Pontiac location behind Lee's back. Number one, Dr. Jack Kevorkian, also known as Dr. Death, is infamous for his role as an advocate for doctor-assisted suicide in the 90s. He carried out an estimated 130 assisted suicides with his medically equipped white 1968 Volkswagen microbus. The van no longer runs and is heavily worn and rusted. However, the odometer reads 18,732 miles. Some paperwork found inside the van shows that Kevorkian sold the car to a Volkswagen parts yard for $150 in 1997. Les Gold and Company bought Kevorkian's deathmobile for a considerable amount more. $20,000. The van was kept on layaway with regular payments being made for some time, but eventually ownership fell to the Golds. Soon after, Zach Bagans of Travel Channel's Ghost Adventures paid $32,500 for the microbus, presumably for the benefit of his show. Number two, in a pawn shop, it's not uncommon for disgruntled customers to try getting away with theft, and thus it's not uncommon for them to be caught selling stolen merchandise. However, finding thieves among the staff of Hardcore Pawn is a far more serious situation. One member of the staff, Christina, was taken away by the police in handcuffs after she laundered some money from the jewelry counter. Another notable in incident happened to Ashley's mortal enemy, former employee Teresa. Originally, Ashley advocated for Teresa and was responsible for getting her hired in the first place. However, the relationship steadily deteriorated until Teresa, still a new hire, was caught taking items out of the safe without permission and putting them on sale online. She wasn't taken away in handcuffs like Christina, but it seemed as if some files were charged and then later dropped. Number three, at one point the show documented a sticky situation involving some stolen art being sold to the store for over a million dollars. Luckily, before Les closed the deal, the real owner of the art called in and clarified exactly what had happened. The story goes that Tony and Dina, the people trying to sell the art behind the back of the original owner, had claimed that Les was a family friend of theirs and could get them a good deal on their art. This was untrue. They had never met prior to the transaction. With Les enthused about the art with the art and about to get it authenticated as one last step before buying, he gave them a number as a first step in bargaining for the paintings. They ended up telling the original owner they were getting it for far less and pocketed the rest of the money. Number four, there was an incident when a hardcore pawn customer was killed by the police in a showdown. Officers at the scene say they'd been responding to a 3.30 a.m. 911 call only to find David Kapsunski attacking his girlfriend. When they warned him, he still refused to comply and was tasered twice. He died as a result. Concern was raised as to Kapsunski's mental stability after the video of him attempting to intimidate Seth Gold on Hardcore Pond surfaced from two years earlier. His girlfriend, who wished to remain nameless, says that she and her children loved him and there were no more previous incidents of domestic violence. Number 5. A Holland metal band, Don the Pariah, lost all of its equipment when its vehicle and trailer were stolen. They had $5,000 in musical equipment and it was later returned after it was pawned at American Jewelry and Loan. The band, Don the Pariah, and its leader, Michael Garcia, gained recognition across the state and beyond after they lost everything when someone drove off with the 2005 Cadillac Escalade and the trailer. He didn't even know it was gone until he left a hotel on December 13th. Then, a week later, Clinton Township Police Detective Paul Collins found the band leader Michael Garcia's 2005 Cadillac Escalade. Collins had identified a suspect which led to the recovery of the stolen vehicle on the west side of Detroit. They had all of their equipment and merchandise inside the trailer that was stolen after a gig at Pub 1281 in Macomb County's Clinton Township. 
Garcia had minimal insurance on his old Cadillac, so he would have taken quite a loss. All told, Garcia figured they were out $33,000. A break came in the case when his partner looked at some pawn shop database and found some of the stolen items had been sold to Detroit's famous pawn shop. Collins talked to the owner, Les Gold, and the police could have seized all the items, but then that would have set an evidence room at the police station. Gold could have offered the items back to the victims at a discount, but after hearing the band's plight, he gave them back everything for no charge. Because of Les and Hardcore Pawn, about half of the band's equipment had been recovered. Number six, a woman walks in calmly and asks to see some watches. She said she had $100 to spend. Ashley and another associate asked her what kind of band and what style she was looking for and showed her some watches. When she finally picked out the perfect watch, she said, I'll take it. Ashley told her it would be $106 with tax. The customer said okay and pulled out a gold preferred customer card. Ashley asked her what that was and the lady told her it's a gift card and there was $100 on it. Ashley told her it was just a preferred customer card to get discounts, it's not a gift card. The lady went crazy yelling and insulting the employees. But what she did next shocked everyone. She tried selling the fake gift card in the store for cash. And number seven, the show almost actually didn't happen. Seth turned down the producers when they first came to him and pitched the idea. Seth said no. He thought it wouldn't help their business. Ashley found out about the offer and also said no. She agreed with Seth. But overall, Les said yes. He saw the potential. And that is why the show is still here today. This brings us to the end of our video. I hope you enjoyed it. Hit like if you did, and don't forget to subscribe to our channel so that you don't miss any of our videos in the future. Also, watch the two videos that are on your screen because I'm sure you'll love them. With that, I'll see you in the next video.